Recently, the Beatles put out Now and Then, their final ever song, and a song that was able to come about thanks to machine learning technology, which was able to extract John Lennon's voice from an old demo. Now, with the song hitting number one in the UK charts, there is some conversation about what the song's legacy could be. And indeed today, I was reading an article by Billboard. What will the legacy be of the final Beatles song, Now and Then? Indeed, it talks about the Beatles song, but there was a particular section that caught my interest. One of the questions to its team says, Considering that Now and Then scored a top 10 debut after it was first recorded as a demo in 1977 and completed decades later thanks to new technology, do you think we're about to see an influx of classic artists using AI and modern software to perfect and release older material? I mean, of course, we're going to see this, but then there's one answer to this that I particularly want to call out. Um, a writer named Joe Lynch says, Absolutely. Anyone pretending AI isn't going to change the reissue remaster catalogue game has their head in the sand. I fear, well let's be honest, I know that ethical questions about dead artists and AI will be secondary to profitability. But I'm heartened to see, in this case, everyone's priority seems to be straight. AI was used to improve a worn out tape, not to create anything new. Fingers crossed that those in charge of the estates of our late icons take the same care when using AI for potential future releases. There's a lot of debate going on about AI at the moment, especially in the ability to generate voices and use other singers' voices and their likenesses, or likenesses, I guess, uh, in artificially created music. However, this is a side of it that I think could potentially be a bit more positive. Uh, music fans are no stranger to reissues and remasters of old albums. Sometimes these are just cheap uh, products made for profit, and sometimes these are given serious care and attention. As a matter of fact, uh, the machine learning technology that the Beatles used on Now and Then has also been used uh, with their recently released, re-released Red and Blue compilation albums. Or I should say the Red album specifically, as back in the 60s, the Beatles would often record a lot of their songs live in the studio with all the uh, band members playing their parts simultaneously. This means that a song like Twist and Shout doesn't necessarily have separate tracks with the different instruments on it. And so what this new album, this new reissue has done is use the machine learning technology to actually separate, separate out those separate tracks so that you can now remaster the album with or remaster the track with guitar with separate guitar tracks, separate vocal tracks, separate drum tracks. This is something that is ubiquitous in modern recording technology and we didn't see very much of in the 50s and 60s. There is absolutely a quandary here to do with deceased artists and like that person said in the Billboard article, I sincerely hope that the estates of these dead artists really do stand up for the rights of, of these people and will set ethical bounds of, you know, when these late artists can be sort of used and when these old recordings should be dug up. And there's two sides that I want to go into now. There's essentially unearthing old demos and then there is reissuing and remastering old tracks. And the demo thing I think is more open to exploitation. You know, I think if record labels have got old demos lying around, especially of artists that are no longer with us, it potentially could be quite easy for the record labels just to kind of dig them up, use some machine learning technology to kind of tart these tracks up a little bit and then just stick them out there in the marketplace for people to purchase. And this is probably goes back to what I was saying where I hope that the estates of these artists are able to kind of step in and be like, hang on a minute, we do want to preserve the artist's legacy here. You know, maybe tracks that didn't find their way onto albums were left off for a reason. On the side of remastering old tracks though, I think we can be more positive. Indeed, the other day I was listening to the new Dua Lipa song and I was really impressed with the production on it. Indeed, actually, it reminds me that some people have been complaining about Now and Then sounding a little bit too crisp, a little bit too 2023. Didn't bother me at all, to be honest with you. I actually really enjoyed hearing a Beatles song with the crispness of modern technology. 
And I couldn't help, while listening to this Dua Lipa song, thinking, wow, what would an album... It's a tough one, so there's a nuance here. Like, what would an album like Fleetwood Mac's Rumours sound like, remastered with modern technology? And yet, at the same time, you know, when you're reissuing an album like Abbey Road, it's sort of like, the album is already perfect. What can you possibly do to improve the production? And that's probably true of great records like Fleetwood Mac's Rumours. On the other hand, going back to the machine learning thing, as I said, a lot of tracks from the 50s and 60s, and, and before, you know, when we had more primitive recording technology, um, they were recorded live in a room. There's a lot of Elvis stuff, there's a lot of, you know, Beatles stuff, there is a lot of rock and roll, uh, British Invasion stuff that was recorded with the musicians just in a room with some mics, just playing the song live. And it would be really interesting to hear say like an Elvis Presley record, what would it sound like if we were able to actually isolate out these different tracks and then remix, remaster them all separately? Part of me thinks this could sound really cool, that the new modern technology could really add um, a clarity to these, to these records. And yet at the same time I sort of think to myself, you might lose something in the process. Part of the appeal, definitely with old rock and roll music, is how kind of visceral it sounds, how live the whole thing is. The fact that there is a bunch of people in a room just kind of making a loud racket. And I think if you took an Elvis song or a Jerry Lewis song or even something like a Buddy Holly song and started separating out the tracks and, you know, removing all that sort of bleed between the instruments and getting these kind of more crisp sounds, you might lose the soul of what made the record great in the first place. And so I guess that's where I kind of want to leave the video now. As I said, in, when it comes to digging up old demos, there's definitely some ethical dilemmas there that I hope the estates of the artists uh, really stand their ground on. But also, there's the side of it in terms of remastering tracks that I think could yield some really cool results. And potentially we could end up with some reissues of these songs that genuinely sound great. And to be honest with you, in the event that reissues of, say, a Buddy Holly song comes out using machine learning and we all decide it sounds a bit crap, there is the possibility of just ignoring it and going back to the old recordings that we know sound amazing anyway. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this, on this side of the AI debate that I don't think is being spoken about very much. And... Definitely this is a side that I see the record labels pursuing further down the line, especially now with the release of the Beatles new, the re-release of the Beatles Red album. In the meantime, I hope you guys stay safe, stay well, and I'll see you in another video. Take care.